out of all the championships that GTS have, there are among GTS superstars who have held it for how long they were able to defend it until losing it in a title match. It is surprising that at least dozens of those superstars ended up losing the title without a single successful title defense. It is even more shocking that some of those superstars who successfully defended at least once would end up holding the title for about less than a week. Honestly, who would book that? Just ask Vince McMahon or Vince Russo, bro. Today we are going to look at the top 10 shortest reigning GTS United States Champions and I'm sure that many of you will be surprised when it comes to looking at those forgotten or unmemorable GTS United States Champions. Let me remind you that there will be multiple wrestlers in the same ranking in this top 10 list. Before I get to that, make sure to please leave a like, subscribe, tap the notification bell so you don't want to miss the latest GTS content on YouTube. Alrighty then, let's go. Number 10, Vlad. Vlad won the US title in the Fatal 4-Way match involving El Jefe Rojo, Cletus, and Giant Leather. Four days later, coincidentally, or ironically, he would end up losing the US title back to El Jefe Rojo after Giant Leather cost him the title, which led to these two men fighting each other in the main event of Grimma Mania. Another wrestler on the top 10 list, Jeff McTestacles. During the beginning of the GTS First Warehouse era, Jeff the Killer, dubbed it as Jeff McTestacles, made his debut when he held the hostage of the entire warehouse. A couple of days later, Bruiser Bonifer was forced to vacant US title and put it on the line in a battle royal. Jeff McTestacles made his unannounced entry when he ended up winning the GTS United States title. Four days later, he would lose to Giant Leather in the main event of War for the Warehouse pay-per-view. And another wrestler in the number 10, The Mark. The Mark won his GTS United States title from Soda Pop Smith, and then he eventually lost the US title five days later when he was unable to show up at the pay-per-view of Giant Sack of Heat. Due to getting a pink eye from Bruiser Bronifer getting drunk and farting on his pillow. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I literally read it that line over from GTS Fandom Wiki. The US title would end up being vacant as Soda Pop Smith was being crowned as the interim GTS US champ. Soda Pop held it for 10 days until losing it to the Mark in a unification ladder match. The Mark would quickly lose the title to El Jefe Rojo a few days later. Fun fact, El Jefe Rojo would end up becoming the 5 time GTS United States Champion. Number 9, Bruiser Bonifer. In the very beginning of GTS Warehouse era, Bruiser Bonifer would win the GTS United States title from Matthias Glass. Three days later, he would be forced to vacate the title after losing to Jay Evans in a match where the loser's title would be vacant and put it in a line in a battle royal. Hitman Jones The future charismatic enigma Hitman Jones won the US title in a fatal four-way match involving Grimm, Shamar, and Joe Dice. Three days later, he would end up losing the title back to Grimm at Stomping Pounds. Number 8, Brandon the Bull. It's funny that most of us may have forgotten that Brandon the Bull held the US title for only one day after beating Soda Pop Smith and then losing it to The Mark. Well, that's not much else to say. Another wrestler, a number eight, Freddie Ivy. It's pretty much a missed opportunity that Freddie Ivy could have held the title even longer because he seems to be the Kofi Kingston of the trio group. I know some of you may not get it, although could you imagine seeing him winning the GTS heavyweight title but only lasted for the shortest amount of time? Anyways, Freddy won the US title from the mark only to lose it back to him a day later. And now we get to the wrestlers who have held less than a day. Number 7, Jake Cage. Jake Cage claimed that he paid Gabby Gilbert off screen for the GTS United States title which was exclusive to AEW, uh, I mean AWE. He would quickly lose it to Cletus in an impromptu US title match. Number 6, Jay Evans. Jay Evans won the US title when he does. Let me phrase this out. 
It's the GTS version of the Finger Poke of Doom. Just why? Let's be for real. If it wasn't for the Kevin Nash's idea of the Finger Poke of Doom, WCW would have been alive to this day. Well, highly unlikely. Number 5. El Jefe Rojo El Jefe Rojo won the US title for the 6th time. He didn't have much time to celebrate as the mark would end up using the rematch clause and win the US title. And speaking of the mark, number 4, the mark, again. The mark won the US title from El Jefe Rojo after successfully using the rematch clause. Ace Marksman shows up and cashes in his rematch clause and wins back the US title. What is this? A championship scramble match? Literally, there were three title changes in one day. It's the game of hot potato, folks. And another wrestler, surprisingly, in number four, Mr. Grimm. It's funny that Mr. Grimm was the big guy who fought once in a match with Wardlow at AEW Dark over a year ago. At the same year, about four months later, he won the GTS US title from Violence at Clash of Cockwagons before losing it quickly to Jungle Jim when he successfully cashed in his Junk in the Trunk briefcase. Number 3. Thunder Rosa It's hard to believe that the former NWA World Women's Champion Thunder Rosa had a sporadic time in GTS, especially during the warehouse era when she won the GTS United States title from El Jefe Rojo in an intergender match. Even though she lost the title quickly due to Soda Pop Smith's successful cash in, there is no denying that she became the first woman to win the GTS United States title before Gabby Gilbert and Francesca. And speaking of Gabby Gilbert, number two. Jimmy Rave. Jimmy Rave won the vacant GTS United States title after unwrapping a present at Christmas Chaos. His celebration was short as Mike Swanson ended up with a cheap shot from behind before Gabby Gilbert cashed in her Junk in the Trunk briefcase and successfully took the US title. And finally, number one, Grimm. Grimm won the title when Jay Evans laid down for him. And that is quite simple. The only reason why he won his very first US title was only because he would become the first GTS Grand Slam champion before Tommy Salami. Wow, just wow. Does anyone even remember that? Well, that concludes the top 10 list of GTS United States champions who held the title for the shortest amount of time. Who do you think is the most forgettable GTS United States champion? And who is the worst GTS United States Champion you could ever think of? Leave your thoughts in a comment down below. Hey, did you like the video? If you did, click the like button. Just a reminder, don't forget to subscribe and please tap the notification bell so you don't want to miss the new content. As always, stay safe, peace, and cheers.